Hello and welcome to today's episode of Socially Distant Discovered Nature. Today we're going to be talking all about butterflies, but first, as always, let's see what you guys have been seeing out in the wild. Our first contribution is from Naomi and she sent in these photographs of this very striking bumblebee. So it's a black bee, two yellow stripes, so it's either a buff tail or a white tailed bumblebee. It does have a white-ish tail, um, we had a bit of discussion, it's quite hard to tell buff and white tail apart. Some surveys just class them all as one grouping because they're quite difficult, but generally Darker yellow stripes indicate a buff-tailed bumblebee. Patter senses in a photograph of teasels, which are incredible. They're a really good source of nectar for bees, and in the autumn the goldfinches will come and pluck the seeds out of them. In today's episode, I want to introduce you to the big butterfly count. Now this is a citizen science survey run by the charity Butterfly Conservation. Citizen Science is when scientists get members of the public to collect the data for them, which allows them to cover a huge area for relatively little cost. We've got a whole Ecosapien video on Citizen Science, which I will direct you to. This survey has been run every year since 2010, and currently it's on at the moment from now, until, let me check, Sunday the 9th of August. So you've got plenty of time to take part. The aim of the Big Butterfly Count is, unsurprisingly, to count butterflies. The aim of this is to kind of, well, they describe it as taking the pulse of nature. Butterflies, really important parts of the ecosystem as sources of food. They're also pollinators and they're quite sensitive to environmental change. So they act as what scientists call an indicator species. So trends of butterfly populations going up or down can indicate something going on in the wider environment. Butterfly conservation has been involved in a lot of long-term research, uh, compiling data. They published the State of the UK Butterflies Report, and that indicates quite a lot of declines since the 1970s. So, I think 70% of species have declined in occurrence across the UK, and about 59% of species have declined in abundance, so that's numbers, again, since the 1970s. Reasons are quite complicated. Um, they could range from habitat destruction, pesticides, climate change might be having a role, but there's still more research to be done to work out exactly what's going on. The Big Butterfly Count is adding to that data and will help scientists to build up a big picture of butterflies in the United Kingdom. The survey is really easy to do. All you need is a spare 15 minutes in which to observe an area and count the number of butterflies you see. Butterfly Conservation provide a handy identification chart which you can download from their website. Very good, clear pictures to help you work out what you're seeing. If you need further help identifying butterflies, I've got a book that I can highly recommend to you. It's the Bloomsbury Pocket Guide to Butterflies of Great Britain and Ireland, second edition, or the updated Latin names. If you want to do a survey all in one place, just sitting down, all you need to do is find a spot, sit there for 15 minutes, and record the maximum number of butterflies you see at the same time. The reason you record the maximum number seen at the same time, rather than all your sightings, is so you don't count the same butterfly twice. So, as an example, I carried out this survey in my garden at the weekend. So I was there, 15 minutes, and I saw a large white butterfly fly past, and then towards the end of the survey, I saw a large white butterfly fly past again. But I will record that as one butterfly so I can't be sure it's not the same one flying past me twice. If you want to do a bit of more of a mobile survey, transect, you can walk along for 15 minutes, again, just recording the butterflies that you see as you go. You can submit the results directly to Butterfly Conservation, and this can be done either online on their website, 
or you can record everything and submit your results using their Big Buds Fly Count app, which also contains a few identification pictures, which is quite handy. Butterfly Conservation also stresses the importance of sending in your results even if you don't see anything, as an absence of butterflies is still important information, perhaps just as important information as finding 10 or 20. So now I'm going to give a quick overview of some common species that you might find on your butterfly survey, and next week's episode we'll look at another set of also common species, give you a little bit of a boost. The first butterflies I'd like to highlight are extremely beautiful, and they belong to the genus Vanessa. The first one is the Red Admiral. So what you're looking out for is a large butterfly, dark, almost black, with bold splashes of red and white. It's quite unmistakable, and it is superb. Red Admirals in the UK are mostly migrants, so they're coming from continental Europe, North Africa, they migrate here in the summer and then they will lay eggs, caterpillars, pupate, get new adults and then towards the end of the year, sort of autumn time, there will be a partial re-migration down south. Uh, generally the ones that remain here, they can die, but there has been observations of red admirals out very early in the year and they can only be adults that have successfully overwintered in the UK, particularly down south where it's slightly warmer, but with the onset of climate change this might be something that happens more often and eventually we might get a full-blown resident population of red admirals. The second butterfly you're looking out for is the painted lady and the main thing that strikes you about this is the brown with sunset, burning sunset orange marble together and some white patches, extremely bold and vibrant towards the tips of the wings. The Painted Lady is another migrant coming from sort of North Africa area, Southern Europe, flying over to the UK and sometimes it can arrive in kind of mass migrations where you get areas absolutely covered in Painted Ladies. They can arrive in May to June time and these adults will lay eggs which will eventually hatch to caterpillars and then pupate and these new adults will be around in August time and it's this next generation that will migrate back down to the south. The next two butterflies I want to highlight are in the genus Aglaes. The first one is what I'd call a classic butterfly and this is the peacock. So incredible, incredible look to it. The things that you're looking out for from an ID point of view are the eye spots from which it gains its name after the bird peacock, but also you're looking out for that quite rich red colour as well. And it's a big butterfly, really big, and when it closes its wings you're also looking out for a really kind of dark underwing finish. Those eyes are to startle and confuse predators, either to shock or frighten them, or if birds are pecking at the eyes of creatures to disable them, they'll peck off the corner of the wing and the butterfly will escape to safety. Our next butterfly, also in the genus Aglaes, is the small tortoise shell. And this is an extremely common visitor to gardens, so if you're seeing butterflies, you can almost guarantee that somewhere in the summer there'll be one of these. It's smaller than the peacock, and what you're looking out for is a kind of sense of orange, but also the delicate blue trim around the edges of the wings is a giveaway, and I suppose what you might call stripes or blocks of colour on the front wings. Some people can get it confused with the peacock, but it is smaller and it doesn't have any eye spots at all. That's all for this week's episode, but I would urge you to go out and try the Big Butterfly Count. It's great fun, and I'll put the website address up on screen where you can get your identification chart to download, and you can submit your results. Or alternatively, if you go on whatever app store you're using on the phone, look for the Big Butterfly Count app. Try it out, let us know how you get on, and next week we'll introduce some more butterfly species to help boost your identification skills. Thank you very much for watching, and in the meantime, take care.